views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hey there, it is time for the Bronx Buzz. This is the program, as you probably know, where we talk to Bronx journalists, Bronx writers, Bronx photographers, get a little insight as to what they're thinking about, what's going on in the Bronx, and then you find out a little bit more about what's behind the scenes when you look and read things in the newspapers about the news, etc. cetera. Uh, this evening, we are going to do something slightly different. We're going to ask one of our legislators to play reporter for us because um, he was uh, as upset as I was to hear about uh, the sudden passing of a great friend of the Bronx, Father Richard Gorman. Many people uh, will remember him as uh, not only a great person, but uh, the chair of Community Board 12. So we are going to go to Kingsbridge Heights and uh, the offices of uh, Assemblyman Jeffrey Dinowitz of the 81st Assembly District. Assemblyman, nice to have you with us, but uh, under these circumstances, really very sad. Uh, you know and I know Father Gorman was a friend to both of us. Um, just tell me about the shock. Let's start there about what happened and then we'll go uh, from there and talk a little bit about our fond memories of a great guy. Yeah. Well, you know, when, when somebody dies way before their time, uh, and Father Gorman was maybe a little bit past 60, uh, which is considered young these days, it, it's always a shock. Uh, you know, he's had some health issues in recent years, but he was still very, uh, you know, very vibrant person. And, you know, you, you look back at his, his life, his decades of working for our community, there are very few people who have given uh, to the Bronx as much as Father Richard Gorman did. Mm -hmm. You know, I, um, uh, I think about interactions, and, and we both together work with Father Gorman on various issues, but I think about interactions that we had, and then also he was... The um, uh, you know the the, the spokesperson or, or kind of the chaplain of the borough. Anytime there was a uh, you know an event or something like that going on, Father Gorman was uh, the guy who was uh, you know who was there uh, you know to, to deliver deliver the the various services or uh, you know the convocations and things like that. Whether it was a, a swearing in of an elected official or just opening a, a big community event or dinner, you know, he, he gave the invocation or the benediction, uh, but, but the, he, he was just involved with so many things. He was a friend to so many people, and, yeah. you know, you don't ordinarily think of a, a priest uh, in you know, in that situation, I mean, he was such a community activist. You know, I don't even know how many years he was uh, chairman of Community Board 12, but it, it runs into the decades. I'm yes, sure it was over no 20 question. years. Uh, as long as I can remember, he chaired Community Board 12 in the Northeast Bronx, and and he was a fighter. He stood up to the city when he had to, and you know, he was obviously, as as we both know very well, he was extremely involved in the whole issue of the water filtration plant that was dumped into uh, Van Cortlandt Park, but, but just on a host of other issues, uh, fighting, you know, toxic waste dumps, uh, you know, in the Northeast Bronx, uh, fighting oversaturation over shelters, uh, of I knew you were going to say facilities. that. Right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, he was just there, you know, he, it, it was almost like he, he treated Community Board 12 as a full-time job, and of course he was a volunteer, he didn't get paid for any of that. Right. Um, you know, what what a resource uh, for the community, and uh, you know, so I had the you know the pleasure really of working with him on, on so many different issues. You know, of course, he uh, over the years he was part of the uh, you know the, the community advisory committee for the Croton uh, filtration plant. So every couple of years since the chairmanship rotated, he he chaired it, and boy was he good. He he did not let anybody walk over him. He stood up to DEP. He fought with them when he had to. He 
uh, worked with them when it made sense, and then that's how he was. He, he, you know, he brought people together, but he was very loud when he had to be, and he was an incredible, uh, an incredible speaker and an incredible spokesperson ne- uh, yeah, on, on some of these issues. Never backed down, and I remember there were times, um, and, and I'm sure you remember because we sat around the same table, uh, you know, before meetings and during meetings, and. We would talk about things, and he was the one who would stand up and say, and and know how to navigate, kind of the waters, uh, ironic choice of words, navigate the waters to get to, for example, the Department of Environmental Protection and get to the truth. And I remember we had some frustration about some of those weekly uh, facility monitoring committee meetings. And then when he became a chair, all of a sudden there was an agenda, there was forward motion, there was real activity. Um, Assemblyman, I wanted to just share with you, I looked up, and and they've run some pictures while we were talking, I looked up the number of times he was on Bronx Talk. And he was on our TV show, and the Bronx Talk started in um, uh, October 1994. His first appearance was soon after on January 3rd, 1995. So one of the first guests we ever had and at that time, he was talking about uh, sex shops. There was a, a problem of sex shops in uh, the neighborhood. And uh, I guess it was in, it, there you can see some of the, the footage of times that he was on the show. And, and he was um, uh, always interested in things like that. I, I was looking at the list. Quality of life we talked about with him. Hot sheet motels we talked about with yep, him. Yep, yep. You know, I mean, I know you're checking off the box along with me. We talked about, you know, just uh, uh, different conditions in his part of the Bronx with the Edenwald Williams Bridge in Wakefield. And then for a period of time between 2001 to 2014, I counted, let's see, one, two, three, four, five different shows about uh, the water filtration plant. And I'll share this with you, and then you tell me what you think. I think that he wasn't involved in it from the beginning. Frankly, you and I were both involved from the beginning. But once he heard that this was happening, he was like, you know what? This is wrong. And he st- he, it, it, it was never a problem. All of a sudden, he was a partner in the, in the community activity. That's the kind of guy All right. he was. Yeah, he was a latecomer. He was only involved for about That's 16 right. years. <laughs> but but, <laughs> but right. uh, yes, when when things started to happen, um, you know, this this century, uh, he, he and certainly when the uh, the, the Croton Facilities Monitoring Committee um, uh, was formed, he he was a very important part of it as the chair of, of Community Board 12 because there were three community boards involved, seven, eight, and twelve. Uh, but he was a very uh, faithful attendee, a, a, a key leader, especially when he was chairing the committee, because it did rotate uh, uh, the chairmanships, and and really very effective. Mm-hmm. And I remember the three of us and our and our friend Karen Argenti, the you know the four of us uh, worked together. Uh, I can't tell you how many times we all had, you know, dinner uh, together talking about strategy and how to address one issue or another relating right. to this. And, uh, you know, this is how things happen in communities when you have a, a relatively small number of people who who are, who put in the time, the energy, who are interested and who believe it's important to try to fight for our communities. And that's what he did for, for his, his uh, Northeast Bronx and for the Bronx as a whole. And, and uh, when that um, uh, fight, if you will, morphed into, uh, because they built the filtration plant, the uh, advocates couldn't stop it, and it morphed into a dialogue, well, if that's going to happen, let's get access to the Jerome Park Reservoir. One of the photos we just showed, uh, I don't know if you remember the picture, Assemblyman, you may remember the time, we took a tour because the, the Department of Environmental Protection talked about Uh, security as being a reason that we couldn't get into the reservoir. And then you and Father Gorman found a piece of wire that was broken in their security (laughs) system. And so you stood there, and the two of you stood there, and were like, wait a minute, if if they're so worried about security, their own systems don't even work. So anyway, yeah, exactly. that, that was the kind exactly. of irony. Now, I don't know, like you, um, I, I'm Jewish, you're Jewish as well. He, that never, you know, he obviously was a Catholic minister. Um, it never stopped him from 
sending me a, 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 a note about happy Passover or wishing me, me a happy new year. The guy had great vision about people as being even larger than his own single religion, right? The same thing. Exactly. Right? He always a greeting, you know, Hanukkah, uh, Rosh Hashanah, uh, but that's that's how he was. He was a, a good person who cared about people, who cared about uh, his hometown of the Bronx, and he, you know, he he never stopped fighting to do the right thing. And and the other thing, aside from all the political action and, and civic action. You know, he was a really nice guy, and he really, I mean, we, we sat around uh, in a Chinese restaurant with him often enough. He liked Chinese food. Um, yes, yes. And, and, and it was um, difficult because, I mean, we know that there, there was, uh, let's put it this way, allegations that uh, didn't sit well, and I think he denied them uh, really till the end, of course, not knowing that was going to be the end. Uh, and so it kind of complicated his... Uh, legacy or relationship. In the final analysis, Assemblyman, how will you remember Father Gorman? You know what? I I I, I don't know. Uh, no one can know what you know what happened thirty or forty years ago. Except the person I know was a good person, and so I believe that he did, always did the right thing. And I don't I don't believe. Um, you know, any of that stuff. What I know is what I see. And what I see is a person who cared about people, who cared about the community. Uh, he, he was a, a good Bronxite. He was a good friend. And I'm always going to remember him very fondly. And uh, it's, you know, I, I just feel horrible uh, that he's not here anymore. And I was, you know, we, 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 you know, we had lunch or dinner periodically. I, of course, you know, after somebody passes away, you say, oh, if only I had a chance to speak to them one more time. Well, that's, right. that's always how it is. But I, I know that, uh, that, that he did the right thing by, uh, by the people of the Bronx, and I, I think we all did the right thing by him. And um, he deserves to be remembered in a very positive way for all of his contributions uh, that he made to our communities. Uh, I certainly will agree with that. I did post on my own Facebook page uh, that um, he brought peace to a lot of people in the Bronx, and so he has earned his uh, rest in peace, I think. Um, he certainly and, has. Uh, Assemblyman, thank you for being with us, for playing reporter on the Bronx Buzz this evening, and we will uh, see you around town, I'm sure. And, um, uh, you know, we'll both uh, salute Father Gorman and, and wish him uh, a long rest in eternity. Good to talk to you. Bye -bye. Thank you. All right, folks, we're going to take a short break, and then when we come back, we'll put our normal hats back on, and uh, we will talk uh, with Robert Worsing of the Bronx Times, who's written some really cool stuff uh, that we'll review. So we'll take a break, and we'll be right back. Sure, I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this Cocker Spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self, and I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. It's not always easy being a dad. Do you have panda asthma too? Does that run in the family? This is the home of the most priceless kung fu artifacts. But when you make an effort... Dad, we're not supposed to touch anything. Oh, sorry. Go along, son. It's always worth it. Whoa, master! The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. I am gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Call 877-4DAD411 or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He really likes to be around people. And as soon as I start to make my breakfast, Hamilton is right there. I get out my mat and I'm doing a downward dog and he's underneath. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. I mean, look at this little face. How did you not love him?
Hey there, back with you on the Bronx Buzz, and uh, we change gears and uh, go over to the East Bronx and uh, say hello to my good buddy Robert Worsing of the Bronx Times Reporter. Always nice to talk to you, Robert. How are you? Good, good, Gary. How are you? We're, we're doing well. I, I don't know if you want to make a comment. We, did, we just did a segment with Assemblyman Dinowitz about uh, Father Gorman, who passed away. And uh, Did you know Father Gorman? I, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but um, did you oh. know him? Oh, um, not personally, but I have I did speak to him like uh, a few times when I uh, when I started here at the paper, and right. I just can't believe he passed away. Yeah, I just uh, yeah. And, you know just like that, literally. So anyway, um, I, I know we all um, wish his family uh, good wishes, etc. But let's talk about some of the news of the day, or in particular the news of the Bronx Times. Uh, I am not familiar with the new committee chair of Community Board 11. I hope I'm going to pronounce his name right. It's Yahe Obeid. You wrote a uh, story about him. Tell me a little bit about uh, the new chair at Community Board 11. Sure. So uh, Yahai Obeid, um, he's, Obeid. Originally, okay. mm -hmm. he's originally from uh, Yemen, but his family moved here when he was eight years old in mm -hmm. 1991. And um, he's actually a Morris Park resident. And um, he... As um, he also serves as public safety committee chairman for Community Board 11, but in addition to that, he's also um, very involved with the Bronx Muslim Center, which is over at Rylander Avenue, in the in that general area of Morris Park, and um, he's actually the director of outreach for the group, and he, um, as well as the center, try to um, pretty much like have uh, a lot of like the faithful um, people who. Um, that attend the center actually like kind of uh, branch out more to like the surrounding communities. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, um, th this is it's a really good thing. It's a shame that we have to talk about these kinds of things, but um, this is a way of, in a way, bringing people together. Take a Muslim leader, put you know, have him be in a, in a, a position of leadership, and then all of a sudden. Uh, people start to see walls and differences between people less and less. I think it's a real nice development, especially if he's capable and he's a good guy. And it's certainly from what you wrote and what we've been hearing about, he seems like he's the right guy in the right place. Exactly. He's a very down-to-earth guy. I, I spoke to him. Very nice gentleman. Um, very professional. And um, he is actually very experienced. Um, he actually is... Um, very involved in the FAA. He uh, works as the um, New York Terminal Assistant District Manager, and um, his office actually supports air traffic operations for up to 7,000 to 8,000 flights daily. Wow. Um, yeah, and this is actually a, a very uh, passion, like um, flight is a very big passion for him, um, and he actually has his own private license as wow. a pilot. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that, that uh, certainly is fascinating, but to me what that translates to, because I want to know about the Bronx work, what that translates mm -hmm. to is somebody who can be, you say, passionate, but also be a good administrator. If he runs operations or involved on operations that large, that means he has global vision. Are there um, issues uh, in Community Board 11 that you think he's going to need to address right away? Um. Well, I think like he just needs to maybe look into some issues like with crime and mm -hmm. uh, I guess like some like quality of life issues that tend to get uh, mentioned like every so often. Right. But um, from what I've heard from his uh, from his uh, peers, he seems to be doing pretty good work. Like he uh, he's very um, serious in doing his job, but also um, is very approachable too, which is always important. It's a, a wonderful combination. Now, when did he start here? Let's see. Your article came out when? I, I got a oh. date here. Oh yes. Um, well, actually, he was appointed back in 2016 by Borough President Diaz, right. and he started uh, relatively within that same time period as uh, uh, the Public Safety Committee Chairman for right. Board 11. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, listen, we'll, we'll welcome him aboard. Maybe we'll have a chance to bring him on here. But thank you for doing that story. Another uh, story that you did, which really um, made kind of citywide news, was that there was a big shakeup at the NYPD. And then if you analyze the people who took the place of the people, um, the Bronx kind of did pretty well. There were uh, a number of um, uh, police officers uh, who are well-known and, frankly, much beloved in the Bronx, who got positions of responsibility? I think, I think that's pretty good, and that speaks well for what's going on here. 
Yeah, it really does. It just shows um, that these people have done so so great in their career that they can go further mm -hmm. and improve and definitely help uh, with society. Um, so um, uh, let's see. Uh, I, I was just looking at um, who we've got here. The current 43rd Precinct Commanding Officer, Inspector Pichardo, was mm -hmm. appointed to Assistant Chief and will serve as the Patrol Services Bureau's Executive Officer. Uh, that's, um, that's a pretty high uh, position. Also, I saw that um, uh, Terrence Monaghan uh, was promoted to chief of department. What do you think the effect of having those Bronx experienced police officers, you know, working with the police commissioner, what effect does that have on policing in the Bronx in the long haul? Hmm. Well, I think uh, they definitely know the borough a lot better and perhaps they can uh, suggest different ways to uh, address different issues within within our borough, the Bronx. Yeah, I think and, familiarity is a very important thing. Yeah, I think it's a good thing, too. Um, and people definitely uh, uh, here in the Bronx definitely do uh, appreciate all the work that these people have done. Um, I, you know, I'm, fi I, I'm finding it out, and maybe you're finding it out more and more so, that, that um, less tension between police officers and communities. And a large part of that is uh, the city uh, taking uh, the idea of community pol policing to heart uh, mm -hmm. so that, um, you know, they're not strangers in our, in our, um, uh, in our communities. I, I just saw that one of the local precincts had a coffee with a cop. What a great idea. Have people <laughs> hang true. out and, you know, have coffee and donuts with police officers. Anyway, the last story I want to talk about that you wrote about, I read the book, this book, Bronx Land, and mm -hmm. you wrote a, um, a story. Paul Thaler, frankly, has been a friend of mine for many, many years. Um, what, did, did you read the book? What a cool book it is about, uh, you know, the borough of the Bronx and growing up in the Bronx. It really is. It just, like, presents such a different view from the Bronx. Like, uh, like I'm, like, used to the Bronx from pretty much, like, my time, uh, from, like, the 90s. Till I know. Present. You're a young man. Just, rub it yeah. in. Go ahead. Rub it in. I, I can <laughs> accept that. But, yeah, it was just a very interesting experience just to see how different things were back then and just to kind of get a sense of, like, how different being, like, a kid back then was. Like, there weren't any, obviously, like, any electronics or anything like that. Right. Um, so you could just go out and explore. And it was just, like, very, like, almost like a um, sense of, like, of imagination, like, that's kind of like what I got from like his adventures. Yeah, and, and what was interesting, and I've talked to him about it, um, and we actually interviewed him on uh, uh, Bronx Nets, Bronx Talk, but um, it's, it's a work of fiction, but it really reads like it really was kind of like his life story. So he took things that he liked but embellished it, you know? The book is Bronx Land, right? You enjoyed it, I assume. Yeah, it was very good, and um, actually a very interesting uh, fact that he told me when, during our interview, um, the book actually started off as a memoir, but then he eventually changed it to uh, fiction for like a better appeal for the audience. Right, Be because yeah. he felt like, you know, my, my real story is okay, but it's not, you know. Anyway, uh, I appreciate uh, very much that you... Uh, uh, you know, you, you kind of used it as, a, as kind of a, a, a looking through the time tunnel and see what the Bronx was like many years ago. Because for me, it was somewhat firsthand because I'm a little older than you, and I really mm -hmm. appreciated because I knew what that time of life was. Anyway, Robert, anything new coming up that you want to tell us about? Uh, yes, actually, I just finished an article yesterday about the uh, arrests that were made in Times Square Hit and Run, and uh, oh. the two men charged were actually from the Bronx. Oh, great. I'm so happy to hear that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, all right. And so we'll see that in the Bronx Times on their website and then ultimately in the paper, right? That's right. It'll be in tomorrow's paper and it should be um, in the web on the website very soon. All right, great. Uh, Robert, uh, say hello to Patrick and all my buddies over there and, uh, and Sarah. And we'll see you around town, I'm sure. And thanks for being with us on the Bronx Buzz. Will do. Thank you so much, Gary. All right. Hey, thanks, Robert. Uh, we'll see you around town, I'm sure. And uh, guess what? That's the end of our program. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we will see you next time on the Bronx Buzz. Oh, and don't forget, this week on Bronx Talk, uh, we will have the brand new chair of a brand new city council committee, Oversight and Investigations, and it will be uh, the council member from the 15th district in the Bronx, Richie Torres. That will be Monday night 
on Bronx Talk. So that's it. Good night. We'll see you around town. there day one with baby names and a gift that lasts a lifetime we are there as you grow protecting you and those you love we are there when you get your first job helping you to save for the future we are there when you marry your sweetheart to help secure your new life together we are there if the unexpected happens to help you see life from a new perspective we are there when you start your next chapter to make sure you get off to a great start. And we are there when you lose your soulmate to help make sure you will be all right. We are with you through life's journey. Social Security, securing today and tomorrow. Get to know us and see what you can do online at socialsecurity.gov. This video produced at U.S. taxpayer expense. Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes, but with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so we're good? What? Oh, you still have pre-diabetes. Big time. see elephants hiding in trees because they're really good at it. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love, love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels.